In the previous lectures we finished talking about two chapters in pharmacology, the autonomic nervous system and the cardiovascular system. So in this lecture we'll start talking about the central nervous system. We're gonna talk about an important introduction, that will make it easier to understand the upcoming lectures. We already know that nervous system is divided to central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. And CNS includes the brain and spinal cord. In this video we'll talk about the brain parts and functions. The major divisions of the brain are the forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. The forebrain consists of cerebrum, thalamus and hypothalamus. And hindbrain consists of cerebellum, pons, and medulla oblongata. Medulla, pons and midbrain are collectively called the brain stem. Now we're gonna discuss each part separately. But keep in mind, they are all interconnected and work together. The largest part of the human brain is the cerebrum. Which consists of two hemispheres, separated by the longitudinal fissure. The surface of the cerebrum is called the cerebral cortex. It works in processing sensory information controlling motor functions, and performing higher order functions such as reasoning and problem solving. The cerebral cortex is further divided into lobes, which include the frontal, parietal, occipital, and temporal lobes. Frontal lobes function in voluntary muscle movement, memory, thinking, decision making and planning. Parietal lobes are responsible for receiving and processing sensory information. These lobes also contain the somatosensory cortex, which is essential for processing touch sensations. Occipital lobes are responsible for receiving and processing visual information from the retina. And temporal lobes are the home of the limbic system structures, including the amygdala, and hippocampus. These lobes organize sensory input, as well as aid in auditory perception, memory formation, and language and speech production. Deep in the cerebrum the basal ganglia exist, which helps regulate muscle tone. The most common disorder of the basal ganglia is Parkinson's disease. Thalamus is a limbic system structure, that connects areas of the cerebral cortex, that are involved in sensory perception and movement, with other parts of the brain and spinal cord. Hypothalamus acts as the control center for many autonomic functions, including respiration, blood pressure, and body temperature regulation. It also regulates the hormonal output of anterior pituitary gland, and acts as an endocrine organ. Many of the functions of the cerebellum are concerned with movement. These include coordination and regulation of muscle tone, and the maintenance of posture and equilibrium. The pons is a component of the brainstem which acts as a bridge connecting the cerebrum with the medulla oblongata and cerebellum. The pons assists in the control of autonomic functions, as well as states of sleep and arousal. The medulla extends from the spinal cord to the pons, and is anterior to the cerebellum. It contains cardiac centers that regulate heart rate, visomotor centers that regulate the diameter of blood vessels, and thereby regulating the blood pressure and respiratory centers that regulate breathing. Also in the medulla are reflex centers for coughing, sneezing, swallowing and vomiting. The midbrain is the area of the brain that connects the forebrain to the hindbrain. The midbrain, medulla and pons compose the brainstem. The brainstem connects the spinal cord with the cerebrum. The midbrain regulates movement and aids in the processing of auditory and visual information. That was a brief discussion about the brain parts and functions, and there are more about this topic we'll discuss in the upcoming lectures, so subscribe and keep following us.